Behind all the colorful killer robots at Freddy's, something is lurking quietly in the background. Strange metal cables hang from the ceilings and snake down the walls in FNAF 1, 2, and 3. Big ones, small ones, tiny threads, they all loom in the background like tangled metallic cobwebs or the veins of some enormous beast. They can't be power cables, they're not attached to anything. And while they keep out of the main public areas, the office and backstage are rife with them. Which isn't an accident, because all of these creepy cables are alive! I'm Blackwood Ferret, and these are my theoretical shorts. Dr. Bose's theory of living metal is the cornerstone of FNAF, referenced in the autobiography of a yogi in the creepy FNAF 1 Night 5 phone call. The idea that metal can be a living thing and house a soul just like an organic body is what makes FNAF spring suits work. If you force a human to fuse with a metal robot, the metal becomes part of their body, and their soul seeps into it. This explains the possessed animatronics, but what about those creepy cables? These cables are the stars of sister location, because every Funtime animatronic is literally made out of them. Throw in a pair of eyes and a colorful plastic shell and you're done. Yendo's were appearances show the robots work just fine without their shells, since he's a naked version of Funtime Freddy with yellow eyes. Everything that makes each robot who they are is fully contained within those metal cables. Those cables can absorb the souls of others, too. The classic spring suits have the power to extract the souls of their wearers, but the fun times can actually hunt down and devour the essence of whoever is in front of them, becoming an next generation of soul harvesting predators. After returning from a surface hunt, Ballora gets scooped right in front of our eyes, as the living metal in her abdomen is shattered and removed. Out of Ballora's robotic womb forms a horde of attacking mini Rena's, miniature versions of Ballora born from the shattered shards of her own soul and that of the human she killed that evening. Baby creates the bitty babs in the same fashion. But if the fun times are predators, the deadliest predator of all is entered, as she eats the other robots. Entered in the promo poster of Sister Location is nothing more than a tangle of cables wearing a mask. But as the game progresses, each of the fun times are deactivated and torn apart, as Inner devours their living metal into herself, becoming more and more powerful. We can even see Inner devouring cables during her jump scare when after Circus Baby gets hollowed out. By the time we reach the scooping room, nothing is left of the fun times but their discarded shells, and Inner has achieved her ultimate form as the fusion of all the animatronics, commanding all of their powers. What does this have to do with FNAF 1? Well, if you avoid the scooping room by accessing the secret private office, you end up on a FNAF 1 style boss fight, defending an office with two doors from Ennard's attempts to get in and devour you. It's like a remade version of FNAF 1, except that Ennard herself plays the role of all the attacking robots. This FNAF 1 simulation is also connected on the site map to an area that looks like FNAF 4, where Nightmare, identified as Shadow Freddy in the game files, pulls the very same trick by replacing all the attacking robots with herself, as if she was the one pulling the strings this entire time. Ennard, the Queen of the Cables, says there's a little bit of me in every body. Which takes us back to FNAF 2 where these very same cables are hanging out of Mangle's mouth. All the Freddy's animatronics are connected together in a network, which contains features like the criminal recognition system. And whoever controls this system can look out from their eyes and control what the animatronics do, which is exactly what's happening every time you see a robot with glowing pupils. Sister Location doesn't exist in the same universe as FNAF 1-4. Ennard's old death trap spring suit you wore on night 4 bears a strong resemblance to both Toy Chica and the puppet, by their wide grinning mouth and lack of a nose, and it's very likely the doomed restaurant known as Circus Baby's Pizza World was actually Chica's party world in the original FNAF 1 through 4 canon. But everything about Sister Location seems designed to teach us about the original universe and details we missed. As I mentioned in an earlier video, Shadow Freddy is a real boss in FNAF 1, and after devouring Phone Guy and biting Jeremy, this little girl ghost has a lot of power and a taste for collecting souls, especially from her own family members. These souls join the cable network and help it grow, while Shadow Freddy uses the animatronics as her puppets to harvest more. Ennard was designed to teach us about who Shadow Freddy is and what she does, as well as doubling down on the importance of living metal to FNAF's hidden epic story. What connection does Chica have to Shadow Freddy? Why don't classic slash withered Chica's eyes ever light up by remote control? I'm working on that video now, but I hope you'll be patient with me because it's going to be a big one. That's my three for today, folks. Tune in next time to ask Schrodinger's cat if my new synthetic flesh is better than the original.